Hey everyone, it's Mr. Wildboy94. I hope you're doing well today. I have a book review today for the technically third and currently final book of the Hellraiser franchise from Clive Barker himself, not including comic books. I did buy one volume, a big old omnibus, last night. I'm going to read that sometime soon and get out a review for that as well before this new reboot thing comes out on Hulu for the Hellraiser franchise. I'm very excited for that. It looks like it could be good. Uh, maybe. I have my, doubt, um, my doubts in some areas. But anyway... <clears throat> This story was, in concept, developed by Clive Barker, but it was actually written by Mark Allen Miller. I'm a little surprised why this happened. Maybe it has something to do with uh, Mr. Barker's decline in health. You know, I, I feel bad for the guy, God bless him. Hellraiser the Toll. Yes, this is a uh, lament configuration in a jungle type of setting. Let me give you a more of a close-up of this cover, just in case you can't see it that well. It's all the details, a little, little dock there. Uh, I had never heard of this before. Apparently this came out about, I guess it was a couple of years after the other book <laughs> that was a sequel to The Hellbound Heart. Of course, the original book that Hellraiser was adapted into a movie from Clive Barker himself is The Hellbound Heart. I just read this and reviewed it in case you'd like to hear my thoughts on that. Very solid read, really enjoyable. I read this years ago and I had a good time with it this time around too. And then a few years back, I think it was 2015, 2016, 17, somewhere in there, we had a new book that Clive Barker had talked about forever. I didn't know about it until about the time it came out called The Scarlet Gospels. I just read this last night and reviewed it, and I had heard about The Toll right after I had finished this when I was looking at Goodreads, and I was like, oh, I need to check that out too. Scarlet Gospels is a direct sequel to Hellbound Heart. It's very much just a uh, continuation of that story in a very different way. Very much a fantasy story, more so than a, a straight-up horror story. It has some gore, it has some violence in there, but it's kind of a fantasy story more than anything. So when I saw Hellraiser the Toll being kind of co-written by a different guy, I was a little curious of what this could be. Now let me tell you up front, um, it's a little underwhelming, mainly because it's about 70-ish pages long. It's not a very long book at all. Uh, I would have hated to have I would have hated to have bought this in a hardcover, like a lot of people apparently wanted to do. And looking online, it seems like this kind of has uh, meandering reviews as well. One of the best things about this coming out after the Scarlet Gospels is that it's kind of a tie-up, supposedly, due to marketing. I don't really think so, but it's supposedly by marketing tying up the loose ends between Hellbound Heart and Scarlet Gospels, because of course those two take place so many years apart. Now, the real big plus here. For people who are big Hellbound Hard fans or uh, mainly Hellraiser movie fans, of course, here is the movie from back in the day that Hell, or Hellbound Hard was developed into by Clive Barker himself, just the first one. Uh, the series itself has been long running. I think we're having, I think the next film is what, film number 11 or 12? It's been a while. It's been a, it's been a lot of movies out there. Anyway, uh, Hellraiser the Toll is a little bit of an oddball for me. I don't know why this is considered the third book in the series. It's listed that way again on Goodreads. It kind of confused me a little bit when I started reading this this morning. Um, again, being very short, I read the story of my breaks on work and I finished it up about the last 10 pages or so when I got home tonight from work after a very, very, very long day. Oh my God. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Hellraiser the Toll is a little bit interesting for big Hellraiser movie fans more so than the actual book fans. Uh, if, you, if you're a fan of the old book, Hellbound Heart, you might find some appeal here. Kirsty comes back as our main character. It's kind of like how Hellseeker was, uh, the movie in the franchise, if you like that. Or Deader. I think it was Hellseeker, though, right? I don't know. Uh, it's been a long time. I'm currently about to start re-watching re my way through these movies again. Anyway... Hellraiser the Toll follows Kirsty about 30 years after the original book. It does take place, this particular story, between, again, Hellbound Heart and Scarlet Gospels. And we find out that all this time, Kirsty has been terrified of what happened back in the day at her uncle's house, which is, we'll get there in a second, about why that should perk your ears up a little bit of as a fan, or even a non-fan of this book. Uh, supposedly it being a sequel to the series, being in concept by Clive Barker. Very interesting. Um... <clears throat> She's been on the run, moving place to place very fast, constantly. And one day, a professor at a university reaches out to her and leaves a note that he sends to her in the mail, a letter, and he basically begs for her help to try to find a way to kill Pinhead, who is now coming after him. And of course, I think it's funny in here, too, because um, Mark Allen Miller, just like with what Clive Barker did in Scarlet Gospels, goes out of his way to talk about how much Pinhead hates being called Pinhead. I think it's hilarious. It's mainly a reflection, in case you guys don't know, about how Clive Barker himself 
hates the phrase pinhead that people came up with on the set of the original movie. He hates that. He thinks it's so stupid. It's so underwhelming to what that character stands for. His, uh, the kind of atmosphere that floats around that character, the way he carries himself, the way Doug Bradley carried himself. Anyway, so Kirsty kind of gets into this situation where she's like, you know, maybe I should try to help this guy. And we get a little bit more of a background story on Kirsty, which we never really got in the movies. We never really got much of it in Hellbound Heart, even though she's like our main protagonist in that book. We kind of follow Julia. We kind of follow her. We never really knew much about Kirsty in the original book. And it's kind of a shame, I think, because she just seems like a weirdo stranger that is interested in Rory. Now, as I mentioned, her Uncle Frank's house, um, <clears throat> in case you don't know, the original book, Kirsty is not the daughter of the man that moves into the house that Uncle Frank or Frank or whatever uh, was torn apart in and that is now skinless in, in that original book and movie. Uh, in that original book, she's just kind of a friend coming to help as a stranger kind of person coming in to help them move in, Julia and uh, Larry or whatever, or Rory in the book. Here, I think the reason this one's called Hellraiser the Toll and not like Hellbound Heart, colon, the Toll is mainly because it's following the Hellraiser movie canon. It's essentially uh, as if you had a movie that never existed about Kirsty coming back and dealing with what she's dealt with all these years. And it's kind of fascinating in that regard. But again, looking at something like Goodreads, who does not consider like the comic books tied to the lore of these books because they're comic books, uh, it's weird to me to have that and then turn around and have this book completely break continuity with Scarlet Gospels, Hellbound Heart. It's very weird for me. If you're not a big fan of these books, this might not really matter to you. If you are a fan, it kind of pisses you off a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And to be, again, in development from Clive Barker, it's probably his idea to have it just listed as Hellraiser uh, for the title of the story instead of Hellbound Heart, like I said. It's kind of a, more of, in my opinion, a sequel to Hellbound Heart than it is a prequel to Scarlet Gospels. All the things that were advertised for this book that I could read up when I went to pick it up last night for like five bucks or two bucks or whatever it was on uh, Kindle... I won't be buying a physical copy of this, by the way. When I looked at it, everybody kept advertising this, <laughs> even on the, the Goodreads reviews tonight, as the explanation for why Penhead does what he does in Scarlet Gospels after the events of Hellbound Heart, even though you don't really know much about him in Hellbound Heart. Now, people are going to be very disappointed, because that's almost never brought up in here. It's kind of brought up one time by Penhead himself in a conversation with Kirsty later on in the story, but it's... No. A lot of this is just Kirsty going out to some weird jungle place uh, in, a, in an attempt to help out the doctor who had reached out to her. And if that sounds like it's not up your alley, it's probably not. It's not that it's badly written. I think Mark Allen, uh, I always get the name mixed up. There's another fellow I know whose first two parts of his writing name are Mark Allen. Uh, Mark Allen Miller tried his best to write in a way that mimicked the way Clive Barker wrote Hellbound Heart, and I think it works really well for the most part. There's some decent humor in here. I like that, too, very much like Scarlet Gospels. If you like Scarlet Gospels, I think you'll be impressed with the humor here. But the focus on Kirstie is kind of the big thing here, the trauma that she has of dealing with Pinhead and all the other Cenobites years ago. If you want more of that, you'll get it here. If you want more of something in the line of Hellbound Heart that was not Scarlet Gospels and the way it was more of a fantasy thing... This might be for you. The weirdo jungle setting towards about halfway through the story, I'm not impressed with. It's not like it's a big overarching thing, but it was just enough to put me off a little bit when I read this today. Uh, let's see. What else is there to really talk about? Uh, there's some artwork throughout the book, like just randomly in the middle of chapters, towards the beginning and end of chapters and all that, you have random illustrations that are just like a bunch of scribbles of people screaming. and It's not even that well developed. That was a little weird to me too to see in here. Um, I really don't have much to say about it. I like the Doctor character. He seemed reliable, but you don't really know if Kirsty should trust him or not. I like Kirsty. When Penhead shows up in here, I really like him as well. Of course, his voice, the way he writes, and the way he is uh, speaking is very distinct. And I think Clive Barker, and apparently Mark Allen Miller as well, really get that voice down perfect. I think it's just as good as it was in Hellbound Heart and Scarlet Gospels. Now... Uh, I don't really have much more to say about the book, as you can tell. I'm hoping this is not a too long book review for you, but it's uh, a little bit of a mixed bag. As I said, it's not really my favorite thing I ever read. It was short, though, so it was quick. It was nice. It was out of the way for about an 80-page story, and that's nice. I appreciate that when it's not the most engaging thing ever. But would I recommend it to you? Well, I bought it for 2 bucks. I don't think that was as big of a loss for what I got here. If you don't want to buy that kind of thing for 2 bucks, I understand it. If it sounds underwhelming, it probably will be to you personally. That's that's what my opinion would be on this. But overall, between a really nice cover, uh, aside from the weirdo 
lament configuration just bashed into the side of a mountain, uh, which is not in the story, by the way. <clears throat> Aside from all of that, I like the ties to Hellbound Heart and Scarlet Gospels. That's really all it has going for it, and Kirsty, of course. But I really don't think I was that impressed with this. It's kind of underwhelming, as I said. And if I had to rate it on a five-star basis, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to give it like a three out of five stars. Uh, as underwhelming as it was, it was okay, it was average, very, very average, kind of bland. Um, but it was fun for what I got here. It was not insulting, it wasn't insulting to the lore or people who are fans of this series. But again, I thought it was a little weird also having it be part of the movie franchise and not the actual books, like Hellbound Heart, Scarlet Gospels. That's weird to me, but it doesn't really matter. It's not a big deal. I would love to hear down in the comment section down below what you guys have to say about Hellraiser The Toll. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Put all your thoughts and comments down below. And again, props to Mark Allen Miller and how solid his writing style was for this. I think it was pretty decent, pretty interesting. That was pretty cool. Um, he had some good ideas and he had some bad ideas. But again, that might be more of a, a Barker thing since he had the concept developed for the story. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Again, Scarlet Gospels was so different from Hellbound Heart, I could see this boy being more of an issue with Barker himself than Miller, you know? Anyway, what are your thoughts? Once again, put them down below. Three out of five stars for me. I hate to rate it so low, but I'm just... This one was very wish-washy for me. What are your thoughts? Again, put them down below, guys. Thank you for watching. All, God bless you, and goodbye.